guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna be talking about what the plans are for this tank behind me. Um, but we're gonna be getting rid of a few fish and I'll be talking about the plans of what we're gonna do next. All right, this is the tank uh, that we set up about a week and a half ago and everything is doing really well. When we first got the tank, the rocks were absolutely covered in algae and it's finally starting to come off as the nitrates are being reduced. And I just kind of want to talk about what exactly is in this tank and why do I have it? So first off, um, as you can see, we have a yellowtail damsel. There is a oscillarious clown hiding back there along with the striped damsel. There is another striped damsel poking his head out right there. We have a chocolate chip star and there is a couple emerald crabs hiding within the rocks. For the equipment, the equipment that we are running is a Aquatic Life, um, it's like just a straight blue um, LED light. Very simple, we have a twin or dual T5 fixture, running a 10K and then a blue plus. Uh, we have a prism protein skimmer, and then we have a hang on the back penguin 150, uh, an Eheim heater, and then the Jabeo, if I believe I'm pronouncing that right, is the uh, wave maker. That would be the one that we had on the five gallon. This tank by no means is where I like my tanks as far as equipment wise and everything, but today that's what we're going to talk about. So the goal with this tank is we're going to get rid of the uh, striped damsels, the black and white damsels, and then we're also going to get rid of the chocolate chip star. That stuff is not reef really safe for the most part. Uh, the white striped damsels, or striped damsels, whatever they are, um, they are reef safe, but they don't do well with other fish. They've actually been picking at the yellowtail and the oscillarious clown like crazy. And then, of course, the chocolate chip star is pretty much going to eat anything you put around it, and we do not want that, especially with the route that we're getting ready to go with this tank. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and get the two damsels out along with the chocolate chip star. We're going to get those, uh, and we're actually taking those to the local fish store here where he's going to quarantine them and then get them out for sale so they can go to a new home. And then for the clownfish and the yellowtail, we're actually going to be quarantining those. I have another tank they're going to be going into later on. Okay, that was absolutely awful. I do not wish that upon anybody. But we finally got the damsels out along with the starfish. We're gonna go ahead and get ready to go drop those off and then we'll come back, uh, do a, a water change on this tank since we already siphoned water out. And I'll go ahead and tell you what the breakdown is on what we're gonna do with this tank.
water change done on the tank behind me and then we'll discuss what's going on. We have those damsels and the starfish out we can go ahead and talk about what are the future plans with this tank if you remember seeing a couple of videos ago about when i talk about what happened why i no longer have the tanks you'll remember that one of the things i talked about was having an all-in-one tank so that is the plan with this now my problem is a lot of the all-in-one tanks are just simply out of my budget and they're not designed how i would prefer even though they are very nice I really want to utilize a refugium in the back of the tank and along with um, a reactor, a skimmer, and of course heater, return pump, the normal stuff like that. So I really want to build my own tank and that way I can incorporate all that into all right. it. Talking about, um, first of all, what's in the tank. Uh, we have this clown, the yellow tail, and I don't know if you can see right down there. That is one of the emerald crabs and I believe the other one's possibly in this rock. Um, as of right now, I would like to move the two fish and the emerald crabs to a quarantine tank just to kind of get them out of here so we can get this thing emptied. And we may be putting those fish in another tank that I will be setting up in the nearby future. Moving on to the equipment, uh, one of the things I really want to talk about is the lights. Um, yes, these are like okay, but they are by no means my favorite and I do not trust them to grow coral. These T5 bulbs are incredibly old. I just simply don't want to replace it. The LED, it is very nice. It's kind of like a temporary thing, but um, it doesn't really offer many adjustments, which I do not like. It's simply on and off. So what I would like to do is in the future upgrade to a Kessel, either a 160WE or a Kessel A80. But if I do the Kessel A80, it'll probably be running two of those. Um, you know, on each side of the tank so we can have a nice even coverage throughout the tank for the coral that we, we will be growing. Uh, right now I have the Red Sea Prism and the Marine Land Penguin 150. Uh, these two do a great job, uh, but I simply do not like hang on the back anything. I do not feel that there is a nice way to force the water through the media, and that's one thing that I really want. Uh, the skimmer does a great job though. So when we go to do this, I would like to do an all-in-one setup. So if you look right about here, basically we'll have this much space out of this standard 20 gallon. And from this far, which is about four and a half, five inches, to about 12 and a half inches or so, this will all be a sump. So we'll have our inlet with our media. Of course, we'll have a bubble trap, we'll have a refugium area, and then we'll have an area for sensors and a heater, and then we'll have our return pump as well. The tank's gonna be designed very weird, but I think I will really like it because one thing for my five gallon, I really enjoyed having a narrow tank. I just like the way it look. So we'll be utilizing that along with, we'll have a shallow end and then kind of like a deeper end down here, which I'm really excited for. The heater, which is the Eheim heater, um, this thing does an amazing job. I actually have, I think, four or five of these. I love them, great heater. We'll be using that on the tank as well. And then the Javeo SW2 model, uh, it does a great job. I think we'll be starting off using that uh, just because it is a great pump and then we'll probably upgrade to the Ecotech down the line. I'm a really big fan of the Ecotech, especially the MP10, I think it would be great the for there, this tank. You can see, 
everything, the wires, the hang on stuff. I do not like any of that. So aside from part of the tank being black acrylic and having all that all in one, the little pieces left will be vinyl wrapped black. So that way that entire background will be covered. As far as the stocking, um, as of right now, I'm looking at more towards a mixed reef. However, with the fish, I am wanting to do more designer fish um, or difficult, like a harder to keep fish. Uh, the tank as it sits right now is just, it's just a fish only tank. If you had a little kid or something, this would be absolutely perfect. You know, we have Nemo just running around uh, this yellowtail. It, it's, it's simple. Uh, but with all my tanks, they've always been very uh, technologically advanced, as you've seen in my previous videos. My five gallon running with the Neptune Apex, my 38 gallon had a Neptune Apex. Uh, everything has been able to be controlled from my phone and I would like to utilize that with this entire thing. I really wanna go absolutely crazy with this tank. If you enjoyed, please feel free to comment, like. Um, throw down in the comments some of the stuff you might wanna see within the tanks, within this build, some of the stuff you may want me to break down and uh, what you would like to see on the channel. Have a great day.